So we meet again to discuss art. I was looking forward to it. Shall we discuss fluxes? So many little shows lately. Certainly. I like it. But why? We do not restrain. We explain. So amusing. So John Cage. Fluxus must die. But it is a good thing to find overlooked artists like Ben Patterson. We know Joseph Boys and Yoko Ono. But what about the Fluxus pieces by Lamont Young? Yes, the world is waiting for another violin to be set afire or for butterflies to be set loose in a concert hall. But I liked his very, very loud music. It was like entering a block of cement and you could not dance to it. It made people deaf. Nevertheless, the 60s and 70s were the Burgess Shale of art. More kinds of art than ever before in history. No phylum must go uncharted. No worthwhile artist must go unsung. Anything that can be sold must see the light of day before it rots away. How else will the future know the past? Rumors and poems will not be enough. I suppose you also think that the Fluxus artists were pioneers of anti-object art. I know they made those awful little boxes. But no one is perfect. I don't think they ever said they were against art objects. And they were certainly not against concerts. So you are against concerts as well as art objects? Concerts are to music as art objects are to art. So unexpectedly you don't like the Fluxus mashup of music and art? In Fluxus the conflict between music and art still confused everyone. Just like the conflict between music and poetry in Ricard Strauss's last opera Capriccio. Confusion is liberating. Break all the rules. So why should Fluxus be stopped? Fluxus did not eliminate the art object. Conceptual art did not eliminate the art object. So what does post-fluxus art look like? The new art we need will be to fluxus as sculpture was to painting. It will be invisible. You will only know it is there when you bump into it. When you are trying to read a conceptual artwork, 